And so when I got out of that stage, I just thought many of us usually would not want to unwind, would not want to share our challenges or our problems with other people, especially in my climb. And so probably some other women could be going through something similar. Just a word, just a line would make a difference. Even if it's just the opportunity to say, I love your story. Some people have never had anybody to say, you're doing well or you're doing good. It's all been negative, negative, negative. And so that was why I went all out to encourage my sisters from all over the world because women all over the world are going through so much and yet we just keep on smiling as if everything is all right hello radiant people welcome to radiant fields happy international women's day if this is our first time to meet my name is karen i'm the encourager advisor of world pulse i am also one of the world pulse ambassadors and i am in a mission of normalizing encouragement in this interview series certified encouragers online i will feature remarkable women in their chosen fields all five of them are world pulse ambassadors they also belong to the top 10 most active encouragers in 2020. They come from different country, continent, cultural background, and color, but all of them are united in one purpose, to help women feel seen and heard through the power of encouragement. Find a place to relax, grab your favorite beverage, and be inspired by the journey of this remarkable woman. Our first guest today has recently earned a double master degree, Master of Arts in International Communication from the United Kingdom and a Master of Social Sciences in Communication from Lithuania. For over a decade, though not concurrently, she was the image maker and head of public relations unit under the vice chancellor's office at the University of Agriculture in Abeokuta, Nigeria. She used to be a broadcaster with the Nigerian Television Authority. She has garnered years of diverse experience with increased leadership skills in corporate communication and global media, fielding a strong background in higher education, administration, human resources, and personal management. She's passionate about serving and giving back to the society, and she would love to be part of an inclusive society. This passion led her to successfully pioneer a charity-based communication campaign at the Vilnius University in Lithuania. And she has a long list of credentials that I will just include on the description below. She's a World Pulse ambassador. This virtual volunteering is her way to give back to humanity. She loves offering her expertise and experience to the youth in her country, especially to girls, to harness their study, as well as other advancement opportunities globally. Radiant people, join me in welcoming EJ Alawudi all the way from Nigeria. <laughs> I'm so happy you accepted my invitation for this interview. I'm so honored. Are you I ready? think I should applaud you for what you do. I'm just so happy. Usually during encourager parties, the encouragers doesn't have enough time to express or talk about themselves. So I figured I just want to have a space for them to to talk, to talk about themselves more. Great idea. <laughs> Thank you so much. Can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Okay. Um, I'm Amy Lomo Joy Alawode. Friends call me EJ. I'm from Nigeria in West Africa. I love making friends and I'm glad to be here today. I especially love women and girls. I am particularly interested in ensuring that every girl child is educated and is aware of global opportunities, especially available for women 
in my climb. Thank you so much, Idre, for introducing yourselves. We're excited to know more about you in this interview. To start with, tell us something about yourself that no one knows about you. Well, I think what most people don't know about me is that I look very extrovertish, probably because of what I do. But then I'm actually an introvert. I love keeping to myself. I love the company of myself. I'm amiable. I love meeting people. But then after then, it, to me, it's just like a stage. After then, and you come back to your home, you just withdraw into your shell. And I am not that kind of societal lady that people assume or think I am. I actually understand because I'm also introverted. So it's Thank nice you. to know that about you. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. So you, you're, you just earned your Master's of Arts in International Communication from United Kingdom and a Master of Social Sciences in Communication from Lithuania. It's impressive how you completed yes. double masters in Europe. Congratulations. Can Thank you please you. Tell, tell us more? Um, what's your unforgettable experience studying in Europe or anything that you would share about that journey? Well, I think the major thing that I would like to share is that we can do it. Anybody can. I think that it was a consolation for me because... I have actually tried twice to earn a master's degree. In fact, I tried about 10 years or more apart. I always finished the coursework, but never got to do the thesis. And that was because I was consumed or engaged with so many distractions, domestic distractions. And that's the challenge most women have. You know, we have so many things on our hands. Each woman is peculiar. And many women don't unwind. We keep our challenges to ourselves. And everybody thinks we're okay. And that's why it's so important to ask, are you really okay? Are you fine? You know, not just the regular, oh, how are you? I'm fine. And so I just knew that to earn this master's degree, which was slowing down my career, I would have to leave the domestic distractions I had. I couldn't afford the education, but I desired the best. And then societally, it's crazy to leave your home as a married woman, your children, and say you're going to study. But then I think I was pushed to the wall, and I think I'd had enough of people thinking I was a failure, family thinking I was a failure. I knew that I wasn't a failure, but then I couldn't explain the domestic challenges and the trauma that I was suffering in other aspects of my life. And so that was why I took that plunge, despite the fact that it looked odd, and went to Europe. I was actually supposed to earn a single degree, but that story will be for another day. But then when the opportunity for the double degree came, I grabbed it and I enjoyed myself. It was really nice. The experience in the United Kingdom, the experience I had in Lithuania, both were unforgettable. If I were to relive my life again, I think I would, it's not that I want to fail, but I think that I would want to go over to Europe again to study. In other words, if it meant having to mark time for some time to get the very best, I would because 
the experience is incomparable to what I am now. I just love my new self because nice. I am totally a different person. You have discovered a new you. It's so nice that you have, you really fought for your dreams and that's very inspiring for me and I hope it will inspire women who are listening, who are watching this to pursue that dream, to, to fight for that dream. Because look at you now, you're glowing. Or you look happy because of that experience. I saw a photo of you wearing a medical doctor's love coat. You said that yeah. you had a minor role as an actress in Lithuania. You were having a freelance acting in Lithuania while waiting for a flight back home. Is it because of COVID? Can you please tell us more about that? That's one of the advantages or one of the perks I enjoyed from doing me and being free to do whatever I wanted. So I saw the advertisement for um, freelancers. It was anyone could come and they were looking for people of color and I'm very proud of my color. And so I felt it was an opportunity to flaunt my color. Yeah. And so I applied and I was chosen in the actor's agency. And anytime there's a movie that they need people of color or they need probably women of my age, then they ask me if I have the time. And of course... I was waiting for flights <laughs> to resume anyway, so I jumped at the opportunity. And it was super cool because I had the opportunity of meeting many new friends. And then I had the opportunity of witnessing how these uh, movies, the Hollywood movies, the produced and all that, they have their name in Lithuania anyway. Incidentally, the movies were Lithuanian movies. And I was so happy because it was an opportunity for me to put my imprint in Lithuania that I came here to study and, you know, I'm living a part of me here. And so, um, although I didn't understand the language and I still don't, I'm just learning how to speak the language. It was fun. I didn't have to say anything anyway. <laughs> I just had to act. Acting is universal. <laughs> yeah. And that I did. The roles were minor roles. And any of the movies at all, some of the movies, I can't even remember the movie titles anymore. And then um, you won't believe that I have not even seen any. <laughs> because you know it takes a long time for the yes. production but one day i just hope that i'll get to see myself on the screen it was really it was really a, a nice time i also learned how to draw i had always desired i love drumming but i, I don't love know how to draw too. you do but well, I, want to learn. Learn. I want to learn yes yes that's cool that's very interesting to know about you as well we have quite a number of things in common <laughs> while in lithuania i also learned how to drum i had um a coach who is a young guy from america but he's married to a lithuanian lady and he settled in lithuania and he's a wonderful drummer during the pandemic he advertised and i just felt this is an opportunity to at least go out have a reason to go out and talk to somebody. And so I enrolled in the drumming lessons. And this is something I had wanted to do for a very long time. But in my culture, it would be, you this woman. Is it that there are no other things to do? <laughs> you leave this drumming for the younger guys, you know? But then while I was there, I was free to do whatever I wanted. And I grabbed the opportunity. <laughs> Didn't you consider to pursue a career in Lithuania? Well, I love Lithuania, I must confess. But then 
home sweet home yeah I there is no it. place like home i had left my family at home oh yeah <laughs> So it's um, always good to come back to one's room and to enjoy all that God has invested in our individual countries. That's true. Thank you for sharing that, Idre. You have a very impressive professional background experience. Before going to Europe, you were the head of the public relations unit under the office of the vice chancellor of a university in Nigeria. You are also a former broadcaster in Nigerian Television Authority. You started a charity organization in Lithuania. And this is what I'm curious about because I met you at the World Pulse Encourager Party. And then after that, you, I just saw your encouragement all over the post on World Pulse Sisters. I just want to ask, after all those experiences that you shared and your impressive background, what is it that, it, that made you, you encourage women in World Pulse? You were one of the top most active encouragers in 2020 and you just started mid-year. What made you encourage women? What motivates Thank you. you. Yes, I am honored to be one of the top 10 encouragers for World Pulse. I was surprised when I was informed that I was one of them because I was wondering, just like you said, that I just joined um, World Pulse. But then when I joined, it was during the pandemic. I was waiting for flights to resume like i had mentioned before one was getting bored because i had finished school and then i was always having this kind of uh, traumatic flashbacks you know about the experiences i had back at home and so i really needed encouragement so worse than that I suffered a major health challenge. That major health challenge almost cost me my life. And I know that God must have ordered my steps to be in Europe at that time to benefit from top medical facilities and top medical personnel. So I was really down emotionally psychologically and everything and i had an encourager my encourager was my sister she just happened to be my encourager we are friends we've always been friends i have only one sister even though we were miles away she was in nigeria she held my hands all the way i would have dropped out yet again because you know the story had always been my coursework will be done and then when it's time for the thesis i don't get to do the thesis but then at that time was when i suffered the health challenge and it wasn't going to be a not again kind of thing you know and so she just was encouraging me that i was almost through that i could make it and so she was with me all the way when i'm low i won't call anybody but her call will come in and will begin to talk that's when i'll begin to wash plates or do things around the house because my spirit was so low then i couldn't even do anything but then when she calls i'll be able to do a few things and then sometimes i'm down and crying because I just was so disappointed about the medical results I got. And she just kept on encouraging me. She cried when I cried. And then we laughed together. It's good to have somebody to just lift one up when one is really down. Mm -hmm. And she prayed fervently and raised groups to pray on her behalf for her sister. She also tried to consult other medical personnel to have um, a second opinion. And then 
she connected me with one or two other people who had similar health challenges to encourage me as well and all that and so when i got out of that stage i just thought many of us usually would not want to unwind would not want to share our challenges or our problems with other people especially in my climb and so probably some other women could be going through something similar just a word just a line would make a difference even if it's just the opportunity to say i love your story some people have never had anybody to say you're doing well or you're doing good it's all been negative 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 if i my in my climb it's like if you encourage somebody the person will become proud and so when somebody is doing well don't let that person know that you actually know she's he or she's doing well otherwise she'll become proud so imagine such cultural nuances and so that was why i went all out to encourage my sisters from all over the world because women all over the world are going through so much and yet we just keep on smiling as that's if true. everything is all right that's true so and that's I, why i observed that from you when you ask me are you okay and then when i say i okay you would say are you really okay wow this ej she really knows how to ask probing questions That's so that amazing. women could open up so you're amazing you're you're wonderful and i hope your tribe increase so you mentioned that your sister has been your encourager what was the best encouragement that you received there could be many but just one that you could share with us it has it's my sisters and that encouragement was you can do it we are in this together you are not alone we are in this together you can do it we are going to do it whatever is going to take we are going to do it and when i suffered financial challenges i suffered a lot of financial challenges but when i suffered financial challenges she was also there looking for funds you know trying to raise funds from her investments and all that just to ensure that i was comfortable and that i finished well and so when i eventually turned in the thesis it was like don't you worry we've got <laughs> your okay what what exactly do you what do you want to write but she knew that she couldn't write it for me but it was like i can just do anything to ensure that this thing is done and done well and you finish strongly it's important to get up get dressed and go for it and that was what i did she got me up made sure i got dressed and you know i showed up i got up i got dressed and i showed up and i made it and the rest today is history i must confess one of my happiest moments was when i was eventually awarded the certificate you know i received one of the certificates physically i received the other one virtually when i received the first certificate physically it was like i had never been to school <laughs> i was so elated <laughs> as if it was <laughs> was you know the kind of feeling you have when a woman is pregnant and you're just laboring and is as if oh my god i just want this to get out and all that and when the baby eventually comes i was so happy and then i told myself it's not a ticket to heaven <laughs> anyway what is all this feels about but then i was happy that at least i had it <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Would you consider that your proudest moment? 
Um, yeah, I guess one of the proudest moments. There was another moment that um, I had. You know, you mentioned the charity organization. It was actually a communication campaign that was, it was an assignment in class. And, you know, we started out as six in a group. We had three groups in class. And we started out as six in a group. For one reason or the other, genuine reasons, three of them dropped. So we were now three left in a group where we were supposed to be six. And the assignments, we were supposed to present weekly. The first week, it was as if we didn't know what we were doing. The second week, we didn't seem to know what we were doing. The third week, the same thing. And then I just thought... I can't come all the way from Nigeria to come and fail here. I've got something to do here. And that's how the idea of this charity came to my mind. The charity idea where we had a campaign called Dash Don't Trash. It was a campaign for students to donate what they had, you know, and it's never been, it's never been held in Vilnius University. It was a campaign for students not to go with extra luggage to donate their clothes, especially as many students don't need the clothes in their climb, international students to be specific. And it was a huge success. People were willing to donate because it was just a big relief not to pay for extra luggage. And then, you know, Europeans change their clothes very often because of the weather. And they thought they wouldn't need the clothes. So why should they go home with the clothes? And so we had lots and lots of donations. And we were able to offer a donation to the Salvation Army and other charity organizations in Vilnius at that time to put smiles on the faces of people for Christmas, those in need, those indigent um, folks who needed something to wear during Christmas or to keep warm during Christmas. And it was really great. And the masks too were great because at the end of the day, when we eventually presented, my colleagues in class were astonished they wondered how we were able to catch up because we were supposed to be six like i told you we ended up being three so we were the few, the the smallest group but then our campaign was also very impactful and strong and so we had one of the highest marks of the three groups so it was a very unforgettable moment for me and surprisingly, while I was in the UK, I got a message one day from a student in Vilnius University who was seeking permission to continue the program. Wow. I was super glad, wow. you know. So, yeah, so it was continued. I, at least it's one legacy that I'm happy about. Wow. So if you have $100,000, what are you going to do with it? How would you spend it? $100,000. Maybe the first thing would be I would just say because it would be too good to be true. But if I actually had it for real, I think I'm going to, I have this baby. It's called the Andres Girls Initiative. I think I'm going to pump that into the Andres Girls Initiative such that every girl would know that she actually matters and that she can be whatever she wants to be. No holds bad. Yes. You know? No holds bad. There's this Latin saying that says, Ad astra pa aspera. It means to the skies. There are no bolts, no bars in the skies. Wow. So that's what I'll do with the bunny. Probably I'll bring you some of the change. 
<laughs> I believe that you could pursue that baby and that $100,000 will just come as you go. Because Amen. Amen. That's a very good heart you have. You have shared a lot. Number one takeaway that you could tell us about encouragement, about women and girls for Women's International Day. It's not easy to encourage. It takes determination to do so. And I should thank you very much for being a great encourager. You know, when one encourages, is, it's people think that one does not have a challenge. You are an inspiration to me because knowing a few things about you, I say, wow, you mean you're going through all this? And you're always ready to encourage and to, to ensure that everyone is doing okay at World Pulse. By the way, World Pulse super rocks. It's made a difference. You know, it's made a big difference to me. I must have mentioned it before. I, I write, but I prefer speaking to writing. So I don't enjoy writing as much as I speak. Nonetheless, being on World Pulse has brought out the writer in me because it's mandatory to write, so to speak. And so you just have to manage to write no matter, even if it's a line, you must write. I had almost abandoned my blog before then, but then when I write on World Polls, it's also material that I easily put on my blog and so much more it's also helped with visibility because i'm obviously more visible than i was before i joined world polls and i can go on and on again if you are a woman and you are not on world polls where have you been <laughs> consider joining world polls today Thank you so much, EJ, for this time and for, uh, it's so nice to know more about you. It's just nice that you have so much stories to share. And I would like to encourage you because you have mentioned that you like to speak more than you write. Why not start a YouTube channel? And that you have, you have a background on broadcasting. So why not, right? So Thank you everything that where they could find you or contact you or reach out to you or Thank maybe you. they I'm want to be encouraged. Instagram. Oh, yes. Instagram. You should connect in Instagram. Okay, so I would, yes. I would put the link on my description so that they could reach out to you. I really appreciate you and I celebrate. I want to thank you too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for thinking me fit for your channel. And I look forward to greater collaboration with you. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, my purpose is to be normalized encouragement, encouraging women, because as you said, we're bombarded with criticism and we do not know who else is just wanting to be encouraged. You know exactly. what women are going through. You've read a lot of stories on World Pulse. They are heard in that space, but there are a lot of women who are still silently crying, mm -hmm. who can, you know, and, they, and we just need more and more, an army of encouragers to just rise up and be army. there. Army, I love that women. Way. Yes, because we're going to start a revolution of encouragement. Sure. Yes. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your time, Eden. Thank you. Too. I appreciate you so thank much. Thank you. Bye.